Hello! Today we're going to be looking at how to create a submodel from an original global model. I've prepared this watch case in SolidWorks, SolidWorks and I've exported the part into Abacus as a step file. I've applied my material properties and the type of loading that I've applied. Uh, you can see here my boundary conditions. I've applied displacement boundary condition and just set everything to zero on that edge there and then I've set a displacement on the other lug there um, so basically it'll be holding the model rigidly up here and then pulling on it down there so kind of simulating what you get, might get from a strap applying a load on a watch so from that this is what my results look like and I intentionally put quite a coarse mesh on this. The advantages of using this submodeling technique is that after carrying out an analysis on a roughly meshed global model you can rerun the analysis on a smaller portion of the model giving it a much higher mesh density when compared with the original global model giving more accurate results with a higher computational efficiency. So we've completed this analysis now the next thing we have to do is rerun it on a smaller portion. So I want to concentrate on one of these lugs, which is where we see the maximum stresses. So go back into the part. And take model and copy the model. And we're just going to call this one uh, case or watch underscore sub okay so now we have two models the original one and the watch sub click on edit and edit the attributes and this time make it a sub model and we wanted to read data from the previous job that we ran so that was called watch job so I'm just going to type that in, but you call it whatever your job was that you previously ran. And I'm going to accept that. Now we have to change the boundary conditions that we've applied here. So I'm going to go in there. Actually, okay, first of all, we have to cut off the rest of the model and just leave what we're interested in. So under parts. Uh, shape, cut, extrude, and to select a plane for the extruded cut, I'm just going to select a surface perpendicular to the direction that I want to cut in. So I want to look down at the model this way, and I'm just going to draw a small rectangle around uh, this section and then a rectangle around the rest of the model so now then everything within this rectangle it'll leave for me so middle click to accept that middle click again and select through all okay so it's cut through the whole model and just left me with one of the lugs so now I have to re-establish one of the boundary conditions anyway um, edit okay boundary condition 2 still applied to that surface there boundary condition 1 I'm just going to delete it that was it was from the the lugs on the other side of the model and create a new boundary condition and this time you select other and you say it's from the sub model continue and then you select the portion of the surface that was connected to the model previously so it was that part of the lug we'll hit continue and I've been told here before just to type in one 
and one, two, and three degrees of freedom there. If you had applied a load, you'd do the exact same. Um, you'd go into create and you'd select other and sub model again. And this time you'd select, you'd still select the surface that was connected to the model previously. But I haven't applied any loads. I've just been using displacement controlled boundary conditions. The next thing then is just to create a new job. Source the model and uh, I'm just going to call this watch job sub continue. And we can't forget to, we have to seed this to a higher mesh density just to take some advantages of some advantage in creating the sub model to begin with. So I'm going to mesh the part again, uh, seed part, and try a finer mesh density. Go a little finer again. mesh the part. So now we'll just go and submit that job. Okay, so the job has completed now. I'll look at the deformed shape with the stress contour plots. And I'll go into, just want to see what the maximum stresses are here. So I've clicked on the contour options and I'm going to limits. And it says the maximum stress here is 1.322 e to the 11. So I want to compare that with the maximum st stress that was recorded in the global model. I'll open up that one. And yeah, okay, there's a massive difference. So this time the stress is only down at 8.5755 e to the 10. Bearing in mind that's a very rough mesh, um, but it does highlight the fact that the much higher mesh density will give you higher stresses, and ultimately that would be more accurate, um, particularly if you try and carry out a mesh conversion study and compare the two of them, or compare the f course and the fine meshes. Thank you for listening, and I hope that helped.